really excited to be here with Heather Tobin, one of my favorite people in the world. Um, Heather and I have been working together for a couple years, and it's just been every time I work with her, I love it. Um, and uh, I have lots of good things to say, but Heather, I want you to actually tell the audience about yourself and the work that you, you do before we get into um, what we're doing just for the audience's sake. We're doing what's called a, uh, a helper progress interview. Basically, um, Heather is part of my ABC, my group client coaching program. And um, we are gonna do hopefully a couple of these uh, interviews with Heather over the course of this year and just kind of hear about the progress as we go along. This is the first one. So Heather, don't there's, there's less pressure on this one to say, <laughs> well, look at me, I'm now a 12 figure business and no. <laughs> um, but you know, you could share where you are right now and then uh, even what you've learned up to this point and then we could, uh, we'll, 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 we'll come back in another interview to share even more progress. So, but Heather, begin by telling us what kind of unicorn you are. <laughs> The, the one that doesn't have the capacity for a 12 figure business. <laughs> <laughs> I am a spiritual mentor, intuitive guide. And for people who like to hide behind titles, I tell people I'm a life coach. And the reason I do that is because even though it's 2023 at the time of this recording, these things are still kind of taboo. And so we don't like to use the word woo. However, for context, I'm very much a worker of the woo. Um, my traditional, I guess you can say, background is in holistic counseling, if you will. I worked um, in the past at a treatment center for people with addictions, and I did that part time when I was working in the corporate industry as every level of administrative and office management you can imagine. So I was really leading a double life and I'm just coming up now on five years full-time being self-employed, which just, ooh, really, how did that happen? But here we are. So that's, that's my title in a nutshell. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Wow. Five years is so much learned. Um, so many struggles overcome. Um, where shall we start? Like, okay, so maybe you could share with us one of the, yeah, one of the struggles or, you know, continual kind of blocks that come up for you. Because I think a lot of people, well, I, well, everybody watching this, you know, solopreneurs can relate to to these things. But um, anything you want to share around that area? Yeah, I think. Whew, where to begin with that? I could write a book on that topic. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the number one block that still creeps in is everybody telling you their system, their method. They've got the best tool, the best tip, the best hack. And it's easy to get caught up in that, especially when you're having a month where it's kind of like, oh, didn't sign that one-on-one -on -one client I was expecting. Because things happen, right? We don't always have a full roster, which as I've come to learn, when you are this new in business, you need to be able to pull from different areas of your skill set. And you need to tap into different things, which is fabulous for me because I'm multi-passionate. I will probably never niche down into one teeny tiny itty bitty spot um, because I love, I love a, a variety of things. So the more engaged and happy I am about what I'm putting out into the world, the longer my business is going to be around because I'm happy. I'm content. And so when we get blocked up and stuck on, oh, I better follow this person's system. We remove from ourselves. We disconnect from ourselves and we lose that intuitive knowing of what we need, which actually ties into the work I do with people. Really, it's about getting connected with your own you know inner guide and truth and dismantling all the crap that we've been told and conditioned to believe and how 
things are supposed to be done in personal life and business and all of it, right? And so the, the biggest thing, really the hardest thing is listening to your own knowing and, and, and continuing to listen to your own knowing, no matter how fancy and no matter how sexy it looks that someone's got the thing that's going to, you know, get you signed those clients and get you your first five figure month. No, it, like I've yet to see it happen. <laughs> Well said. And of course, I, I know that you have, you assume the caveat, except for George Cow's systems. Obviously, <laughs> those are the only truth, absolute <laughs> truth in the universe. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we all understand. On as the long same as page. everybody is aware that the GK <laughs> system. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, I'm so glad you mentioned this because as you probably have seen me, I mean, I always try to tell people, listen, I love rebels. What I'm telling you is just one way, my way at this time that seems to work right now. And yeah. you could try it, but please customize, please tear it apart, please integrate everything. I always tell, and actually recently one of my, uh, one of my students told me, George, you're not very directive. Actually, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what this means. Maybe you all can tell me, he says, George, you're not very directive. But that's also why we love you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thank you. But okay. But yeah, it's, it's, I so, um, it, it is such a hard, yeah, in this life world of trying to build, you know, a, a successful business. Yes. Like you said, you, you turn around, there's another Facebook ad. You turn around, there's another email that says, this is the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and you've been around and you have seen all of them and you've oh. tried most of them, you know, and, oh, and, and and so tell us what, you know, um, yeah, keep going on that, because I think this is this is going to be helpful for people. Like what hasn't worked for you? Maybe what's one thing that hasn't worked for you and what's one thing that has? <laughs> OK, yeah. yeah, good question. So. The, the one thing I do want to add to that is anything will work if you work it a hundred percent, whether it's a $5 thing or a $5,000 thing, but you have to be willing to put in almost like the exact amount of energy that that particular solution provider is giving you. And, and literally like step by step by step by step. The problem is we're not in that person's body at the time, right? Or their or their mental space or their emotional capacity or their spiritual bandwidth or their physical, like, do they have kids? Do they not? Do they care for somebody else? Do they not? Are they single? Are like, there's so many variables and that's why the majority of this stuff doesn't work, right? Because we don't have, we're not, we're not clones of the teacher. And so one of the takeaways for me that always works, no matter what I take, no matter what book I read, course, whatever, is take the pieces that do truly feel aligned with my messaging, with my energetic capacity, with my beliefs, with my values. And maybe there's, you know, so it could be something so simple or it could be the most complicated, complex thing. But if it makes sense in the moment, that's where you're going to get the traction and that's where you're going to get the growth. So, for example, with yourself being a huge proponent and user of Todoist, I was like, OK, I'm, I'm in. We're going to do it. We're going to give her. And I sat down and I, for two months, I'm like playing and playing and using it and using it. And I just paid for my subscription today for a year. I'm like, I'm in, I'm sold, I'm good. But I had to give myself the permission to give it a fair shot. And so what works is listening to what you're being taught, discerning is this really truly going to work for me or am I just looking for the next gadget? Oh man, that's so good. That is so good. And I'm glad uh, fellow to doist user. Welcome. No, um, 
yeah, whether it's the doist notion is big these days, uh, you could use whatever Trello, Asana, oh. it doesn't matter. Like I always say, yeah, discernment is right. And I want to, I'll, I'll add to that, like listen or look for the principle behind the technique, right? Like, like, mm -hmm. like it's not somehow to do with this is the best software or whatever it is you're talking about. It's the principles behind it yeah. of gathering things in one place, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being able to categorize them, being uh -huh. able to check them off, being able to prioritize, like there's a power to that. And like whatever you're using, whatever system or technique, do you, are you applying those principles in your own way? Right. Like, cause that's what matters. So I, I so appreciate, this is such an important message. Like, because so, so tell, so say more, say more, like, like, why is it people chase the right technique? Because I have seen, I have seen people year after year, this is now my guru. This is now my system. This is, oh, this person is selling that program that got to jump in. And I'm, I'm saying this as it might, even though it might downgrade my business because that, that's what I do. No, I don't do that. But but <laughs> I sell programs too. I sell systems too. I try not to make it like end all be all. But like, why is it? Why is it people chase? And I think this is related to like this whole inner knowing thing. Like, well, yeah. We chase because we have not been shown how to have our own agency. And our own trust and our own belief in ourselves and whatever it is that we desire. I mean, look at history. Look at look at what you're taught as a child. Like I remember fairy tales, movie networks, whatever. Like the the ultimate is you know, you grow up and you marry your high school sweetheart and you have a child or 2.5 or whatever it is, like where the 0.5 comes in, I do not know. Um, white picket fence, a couple of dogs, you know, and then you get the career if you're not barefoot and pregnant and the laundry is hung on the line. And it's like this beautiful women's network, you know, movie of, of the week in February, right? Because it's Valentine's Day. That's what we see. There's no one talking to us about so how do you feel about this? Where does this sit in your body when someone says, this is what you have to do. This is the system you have to follow. This is all of the things that we're not going to get political about because we're going to keep it on a family level show here, folks. <laughs> but these are the things that no one has taught us about truly tuning in and listening to our heart. I mean, if I take my own example, it wasn't until I was probably, oh my gosh, somewhere in my mid twenties that I started to trust and believe that my intuition was actually a thing. That it's it really early, that, by the way. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, like, that's great. It, it took that long. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's continuing, right? It's you're you're continuing uh, using your techniques and things. So, okay, given that you've learned this and or continuing to, and given that you you use your inner knowing on a regular basis, what does that mean? What has that meant for you now? Like on a on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> for example, like how do you then go about picking, choosing something to do. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm not saying you have the perfect answer. I'm just curious what, <laughs> where are you at with that now? <laughs> I, I yeah. love this question because yeah. you know, I'm a huge lover of joyful productivity. Everybody, please make sure you get your hands on that. <laughs> um, what I have come to harmonize I want to say within myself with that is what is the next best thing I need to do right now for myself and I say that because my business is not separate from myself 
wherever I go, there I am, right? Like I bring myself into every situation. So that could look like going for a walk again around the block because it's a beautiful day. It could look like going for a nap. It could look like writing a newsletter. And am I totally constantly always flying by the seat of my intuitive pants? No. Obviously, there are actionable things that need to be done in the course of a week or a day or or whatever that looks like for me in any given moment. But what it truly deeply means to me to, to, to sit with that inner knowing on a regular and consistent basis is it has not steered me wrong. I have this ultimate trust that if I don't get a newsletter out this week, it's not going to be the end of the world. That if I decide I need to take some time to continue to rest, that I still make money when I'm resting. And so on a Tuesday afternoon, as you put it, what does that look like? It, it really, truly does look like, okay, heart, what do we need right now? Oh, you feel like you could do some work stuff? Okay, let's let's look at the to-do list. Let's see. What, what, what's, what jumps out? Is there something urgent that needs doing? Is there a deliverable? Is there a call I need to prepare for? I'm not saying, like I said, I sit back and, and just chill and do nothing, but there is a lot more freedom and a lot more spaciousness. I would say probably in the last year, if I'm being completely honest, that I kind of went, you know what? I don't need to hustle. I don't need to push. I don't need to um, stress myself out to the point of illness because, hey, let's do that several times in the first five years of business. Because again, got to make money, got to do the things, got to show up. All the gurus tell us this, right? So yeah, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, so good. It's, and and I have to say, having worked with you in different capacities, you are very productive. You are very productive. You're very responsive, more so than most people. So whatever you're doing, I think is working at least for your teammates um, and your clients. Right. And um, so, yeah, that's really key. It's not that, because there's this, there's this idea that if you just go with the flow or whatever, which is a whole thing we could talk about. But it's like, if you go with flow, you're just doing nothing. You're just right. playing video games all day or watching movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, how, you know, and, and, and maybe you could talk about this a little bit, like, mm -hmm. like choosing, choosing what's truly well for you. is not easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no. Um, I, in the last, I don't know, few months, this phrase has been with me and it's how am I choosing radical responsibility for how I'm showing up in the world? And what type of life do I want to have? And what is realistic, but also magical at the same time? Because we're not meant to suffer. We're supposed to be here to, you know, have joy and love and freedom and spaciousness and beauty. I mean, it's everywhere, right? But we lose ourselves in that. And so this radical responsibility for really, truly understanding that nothing is going to land in my lap if I don't somehow show up in some way that's the radical responsibility piece to, to co-create the beauty in the world and the, yeah. and the love. And the, right? it's like, yeah. it's, it is, I think, constant work, but, but the way that you work is one that's really deeply connected to your inner unicorn, Absolutely. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. which is, which is, which is, which is the, the secret that all of us find our inner unicorn well yeah. speaking of which i um and i I'm, unbelievably the time has already uh passed so fast <laughs> tell the audience um about what you offer so tell sure. us about uh if people are interested in working with heather the unicorn what does that mean what step do they take what do you 
how available. Sure. So what that looks like for most people is they tiptoe in, they book a session, they kind of go, oh, well, that was kind of interesting. And they either decide they're madly in love with wanting to work with me or they're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because it's very obvious if someone is ready to deep dive and it's not right or wrong. It's just, this is the framework we're working with with me. We're going deep. We're not going fluffy. Like we're, we're taking this really truly to a, to a deeper level. So I always like to say that to people, there's nothing wrong with doing, you know, a healing session or a one-time top up kind of like getting your car in for an oil change. Um, but for ongoing work and maintenance and, and self-development, we have to do this stuff regularly. So I spend more time working one-on-one -on -one capacity with people over a period of time, anywhere from, you know, six to six months to a year, typically. And in that, I also do some, some dabbling with one-on-one -on -one spots when I have the availability for, for the one-timer type folks that are interested. Um, I have the opportunity for people to do readings with me, which kind of help people get some clarity. And when I say readings, I mean intuitive readings. Helps them maybe shine a light on some stuck points that might be floating around in their, in their orbit, in their realm. Um, I do have a class here and there, a group here and there, which is great for people who are wanting to get their feet wet and be around other people who are, are doing similar work. But the deepest work definitely is the the one on one stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I will of course have the links uh, you want to share below the video. Um, you are awesome, amazingly uh, creative and active on your Facebook profile, your Facebook page. So we'll have that below. Um, you write some great things. You share some amazing things. And um, yeah. Well, thank you so much. So just to clarify uh, for everyone watching this, I call this a helper interview in the beginning because um you know heather is one of the helpers in the in the client group and we will get to talk to heather again uh, at least once or twice this year to hear about things so so this is something i've been asking all the all the interviewees um what's something that you would like to celebrate the next time we talk again is there a particular project or direction that you're leaning into or something you're working to transform that we can check in on next time. This is public accountability, <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? They might forget about all of it. But what what about you? What what for for this year? Where where are you leaning into, and how can we grow that? Sure. So two things. One is um, continued. Can, can anyone say it? Yeah. Continued sustainability. Yes. 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 So no more of this thing. Right. Right. So that doing this a little bit, maybe a little bit up, but yeah, or that would be fab. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the, the main, I think, energetic focus. Mm. And the second piece I really would love, even though I say this and I know I'm going to, and I know on my second interview, I'm like, yeah, I don't even know why I said that, but I'm going to say it anyway, because this is how intuition works. My brain wants to have a very specific container for one-on-one -on -one people so they know what they're getting into, what the cost is, and the length of term. My spirit side, my soul side is like, yeah, but it doesn't work that way. So that's an example of what it's like to work with me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Separating bring, those two. You, you, you bring nuance, you know, and you bring sort of like connected decision making you know, uh -huh. in, in the moment so this is good well thank you heather thank you thank for you. who you are and what you bring to your colleagues clients friends and um yeah looking forward to having this again interview again in a couple of months okay thank, thank you, you george so that's great thank you